So Tanya Blount is done being silenced by Diddy because she just exposed him for killing his artist careers and sucking the life and energy out of them. He's just a person that needs the energy of, of humans, you know. Things are about to get messy for Diddy because Tanya's confessions have the internet reeling in shock and fans are now coming for Diddy and they are coming hard. Wait, did he really send one of his artists to prison? Diddy has been involved in a crazy amount of drama in the past couple of months and it's about to get worse for him. One of his former bad boy artists, Tanya Blount, just came out to accuse him of mismanaging and killing her career out of spite. But Tanya didn't come to play because she has also brought receipts of how Diddy killed the careers of other artists that were signed to his label. While some might find these accusations to be wild, it actually adds up with what people have been saying about Diddy and his label for years. There have always been comments about how weird it is that Bad Boy signs an artist who drops a couple of mega songs and then disappear completely from the industry and their careers never recover. Well, according to Tanya, it's because Diddy ruins and frustrates the artist so much that they eventually get fed up with the entertainment industry. And she listed several artists artists who were victims of this, starting with herself, of course. Tanya signed with Bad Boy Records in 1996, and she had high hopes for her career because, well, Bad Boy was a pretty hot label back then. And to be fair to Diddy, he did have big plans for Tanya when he first signed her. But along the line, something changed. In the beginning, he linked her to some big name producers and songwriters in the industry so they could help her work on an album that would be released through Bad Boy. He even got personally involved in the production part of things, and Tanya recalls that he was guide in a project. It was very exciting. But things went downhill when Diddy grew bored with her project and started paying less and less attention to it until he eventually lost all interest in it. According to an interview that she did with the Washington Post, she now alleges that he finally stopped working on it altogether, allowing it to languish for months. Eventually, months became years. There are only so many times that you can update a song. She insists that her issues were not just because Diddy ignored her album because she now believes that Diddy tricked her and had been playing her from the very start. Her manager agreed with this in an interview he claimed that they got caught up in Puffy's vortex. It gets even worse because the songs she was recording for the album were not the type of songs that she wanted to do. She felt like Diddy was putting her into a box when all she wanted to do was explore different sounds. In an interview with Elysian Magazine, she said, we had just recorded about 50 to 60 songs at Arista Records with Sean Combs. Everyone knows him as Diddy or Love now. Now, I remember going to the studio and telling my manager, I don't want to do this. I want a different style of music and legacy. Why can't we blend all these styles of music that I grew up listening to? Why do I have to do this in order to make it? I want to record something completely different. So Diddy forced her to record 50 to 60 songs that she really didn't like only to drop her and scrap her album anyways. But it gets even worse because she claims that she had gotten so frustrated with the album being ignored that she tried to take her own life. It was the hardest decision because that was how I was able to provide and take care of my family at the time. It was so hard, it broke me. It really did. I went into therapy with mad thoughts and even attempted to unalive myself. I was in a Dallas hospital on a 72 hour watch. I had taken pills. I decided this is it. My son was fine. He would have people to take care of him. I just gave up. So eventually she got dropped by the label in the early 2000s without dropping any album. She was so traumatized by her treatment by Diddy that she didn't make music again for 15 years until she started releasing songs with her husband in 2016. And to tell you how messed up bad boy records can be, Tanya claims that she got out lucky because some other artists were not so lucky and she lists Craig Mack as one of such artists. Remember how Diddy pushed Tanya to the side after working with her for a short time? Well, it's the same thing he did to Craig Mack and we're starting to see a pattern here. When Diddy first signed Craig, he was the golden boy of bad boy records, but not long after this, Diddy discovered the notorious B.I.G. aka Biggie Smalls and he immediately pushed Craig to the side. But not before before he made Craig do a song with Biggie to push Biggie to the limelight, Biggie hopped on the remix of Craig's song, Flavor In Your Ear. Tanya believes that Diddy used Craig to push Biggie because neither Biggie nor Craig wanted to do the remix, but they were forced to. Uh, but I noticed like on the remix, Flavor In Your Ear, y'all worked That together. was just something I had to do, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's politics, Puff asked me to do it, yeah. I did it. Things between Diddy and Craig got even worse when Craig changed his manager to someone he believed would be a better fit for him. Well, Diddy he didn't like this and asked him to fire his manager. And Craig Mack, yo, they had a good relationship until Red Craig Mack changed his manager. 
When Craig Mack changed his manager, Puff didn't like him for whatever reason he didn't. He told Craig, yo, if you don't fire your manager, nigga, you can't work for bad boy. So Craig was having problems and issues because he refused to fire his manager. When Craig refused, his issues with Diddy got even worse. And the worst part about this is that Diddy kept stringing the media along, claiming that he was working on another album for Craig under Bad Boy. That's cool, and I'm sure you got much things in store for my yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Here. We got a new album we're working on him to drop in January. Besides that, we're about to just drop our R&B stuff. The Puff we Daddy wanna... album. Well, Craig's face told the complete story because he made it clear that Diddy was capping. They weren't working on new music, and according to Tanya, the only reason Diddy said that was to make himself look good in the media. Diddy eventually kicked Craig out of the label, but Craig continued to make music as an independent artist. Now, some people believe that Diddy might have gotten Craig blacklisted in the industry because of the issues they had. Now, I'm not gonna say if that's true or not true, but all I will say is that Craig never found success in the industry after he left Bad Boy. But Tanya didn't just stop there because she has stories for days, and this time, she decided to speak on Diddy's former artist, Shine. Tanya believes that Shine got treated the worst because Diddy literally sent him to jail. In December 1999, Diddy took Shine and his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez to a New York club with him. But things went wrong when he got involved in an altercation with another patron at the club. The argument got heated and was about to get physical when Shine pulled out a gun and fired shots into the air. He ended up injuring three people and he was charged with counts of assault, reckless endangerment, criminal possession of an illegal weapon, and attempted murder. He was acquitted of the attempted murder charge, but convicted on all other charges and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. But people have always felt like there was something shady about the case, and Tanya is now claiming that Diddy sacrificed Shine to save himself. A witness claimed that she saw both Diddy and Shine shoot guns. Even more, an eyewitness and a ballistics expert testified that the three injuries may have been caused not by Shine, but a second gunman, and Diddy is believed to be the second shooter. But he was never charged. He only faced charges of having a gun that was found in his car, but the charges were dismissed. The interesting thing about this is that not only did Diddy not hire great lawyers for Shine, but he is also believed to have thrown him under the bus to take police suspicion off himself. According to his former bodyguard, Diddy allegedly paid witnesses to testify against Shine during the trial. Those people were testifying, they were brought to Puff first, saying that they what they saw against Shine and what they saw Shine do. The DA didn't even know those people existed. You understand what I'm saying? Shine said it himself, y'all. But the sad, sad part about all this is that Bad Boy Records then dropped Shine when he was in prison. Shine also confirmed that Diddy had betrayed him in a 2020 interview when he said, Puff apologized. He did apologize to me for that when we met in Paris. He did say that he could have handled it better, but he was under a lot of pressure from lawyers to throw me under the bus. But Tanya doesn't believe that the lawyers had anything to do with Diddy's decision because she thinks that Diddy was just being selfish. Tanya's revelations have sparked a new conversation about Diddy and Bad Boy Records with people saying stuff like Bad Boy for Life only applied to Sean. Look at his track record of him letting his artists end up on the streets or on drugs. These people helped build his empire and he threw half of them away like trash. That man is a scammer. That's why he keeps changing his name and trying to rebrand. Survive and Puff Diddy love. And Diddy is like a black hole. He destroyed so many careers it isn't funny. Everything he touches turns to ish. There literally isn't one story story about someone signing with Bad Boy that ends on a good note. I'm one of those people that never believed in curses and blood sacrifices, but something is up with Puffy. Now I have to hear back from you guys about this. Do you believe Tanya's claims about Diddy being shady or do you think she's just being bitter? Don't be shy and drop your opinion in the comments. And if you think that this drama was shady, well listen baby, you better check out this next one.